Hi everybody, this is Chelsea from Personal Touch Scrapbooking and today I wanted to show you uh, a little demo of the Tim Holtz Distress Paints. So I have a few colors here and I've been eagerly awaiting for them to arrive and then playing around with them a little bit. This card that I have here is a project that I did with uh, a bunch of people at my scrapbooking retreat this spring. And we basically just did the background with the distress paints and we painted an acetate heart uh, that I punched out with the movers and shapers die and also the button I colored with the uh, distress paint. And then I stamped over top with this nice stamp. So I'm just going to show you how to do basic background and then I'm going to show you on some of the other materials that I have here. So I'm going to work on a tag. This is not um, a ranger tag. It's a little bit lighter than a ranger tag, but works really good for just playing around and trying some different things. So I always like to pick colors that are going to blend well together and I always gravitate towards the cool colors so blues and greens and purples and all that kind of stuff so I'm going to use a few different colors and I think I'm going to throw in some brushed pewter so all of these colors have a little mixing ball so you just want to make sure you shake them up really good and they're very fluid they're a lot more fluid than a regular acrylic paint and then they just have a dauber. So you can see this one is brand new. So in order to get it going, you just have to push the dauber down and then that gets the paint flowing. So I'm just going to, I'm going to go a little bit light with the pewter because I don't want it to overpower my other colors. And these paints do react with water while they are wet. If you let them sit and dry, they're permanent. So that is really nice for some different layering. Because as you probably know, the other Ranger products are not permanent. Like Distress Ink, Distress Stain, Distress Marker. Activate them with water even after they have been applied and dried and everything. So now I kind of have a good coverage on there. And I'm just going to mist with some water. You can see I'm using a lot of water and then I'm just going to let them run and maybe add a little bit more water. So you can see they do all kinds of beautiful marbling techniques and I'm just going to throw some more silver in there because I kind of sprayed it really heavy and washed it away. Give it another dose there. Now. If you're working with watercolor paper or um, something a little bit heavier, even the manila tags or manila paper works really well because they take all the water. So I really like to use watercolor paper, but just for the purposes of demoing, I'm just going to use these light tags. So now you can either add more water and keep working with it, or you can just let it dry. So I'm going to put this off to the side. I'm probably going to have to dry that with a heat tool because that is a lot of ink on there. But I'm just going to let it sit for now and kind of air dry for a little bit. So I'm also going to show you how the inks react on acetate. Or the paints, sorry, re react on acetate. So hopefully you can see it. It's a, I cut it out with the number 8 tag die from Tim Holtz. And I'm just going to add some paints to it. And I think I want these two to kind of coordinate and I'm not going to completely cover it. So I think I will do some chipped sapphire. I'm just going to put it around the edges. Chip sapphire is a nice dark blue but it also looks kind of purpley. Um, I was a little sad that there wasn't another purple color in this release of the colors just seedless preserves because I really like dusty concord or even shaded lilac is really nice so 
I can do this just like a regular paint dauber and not spray it with any water. And the great thing is, is once this dries, it will be on here permanently. Because a lot of paints, if you put that on something slippery like acetate, you'd be able to go back with your nail and just chip it off afterwards. So um, I think I'm going to give it a shot of water. We'll just kind of see what happens. And get some of that wicking going on. Kind of soften those edges. Oh, get some nice dripping going on down here. You probably don't want to heat it too much with your heat tool just because the acetate will crumple up and uh, kind of melt on you. So I'm going to let that one mostly air dry and then I'm going to dry it a little bit with my heat tool. So I will be right back once these pieces are dried up and show you some more stuff. All right, I'm back. So I'm not super patient trying to wait for things to dry, so I'm still a little bit damp in these really thick looking areas, if you can see that. You can see it's a little bit still wet down here, but it's mostly dry, so I'm gonna move on and show you some other things. So you can see that shine from the metallic is just really nice. You don't wanna put too much metallic on there because it will completely take over your whole tag or your whole project. But the colors you can just see turn out really cool. And on the acetate, I like doing it on one side and then flipping it over and using the reverse because it's actually all smooth. And uh, it's gonna give me a really nice distressed background that I could either put over, I could either put it over another tag like that and do a background behind there, or I could put it over this tag and just have a very layered layered tag. All right, so now I wanna show you some stamping with the paints. I'm gonna use this background stamp by Hero Arts. And I'm just gonna put a few different colors on the stamp. If you're using the stamp for um, with any kind of paint, doesn't doesn't matter if it's distressed paint or any kind of acrylic, other acrylic paint, you want to make sure that you wash it right away afterwards. Um, otherwise, it will uh, permanently stay on your stamp. So I recommend uh, making sure you do that. Uh, let's see what other color do I want to use. Let's throw some other blue in there. I'd say the hardest thing when it comes to playing with these is just deciding what colors I want to use. There's just too many options. <laughs> Although I do want a peacock feather uh, paint dauber really badly. So I'm hoping that will be in the next release. So you can see here I've used the white after I used dark colors and that is okay. You can see I have some black, I have some blue on there. All you need to do is take a piece of uh, kitchen towel or a rag and just squeeze it all off until it's all gone. It doesn't wreck the paint inside, it just makes the dauber a little bit dirty. So now I'm just going to move this out of the way, mix this with a little bit of water just to make it nice and runny. And we'll see what we get. You never know with stamping what you're gonna end up with. I'm just pressing over the back. As you can see, the back side of my tag is <laughs> very messy. You could mask that off if you were doing this for a project that, you know, where you would see the back and that bothers you. All right, there's my stamped image. So now if I didn't like this, I could mist it with water and take it off um, before it dries. So I don't know, it's kind of dark. I kind of lose a lot of that color that I had going on in the background, but that's all right. We'll just roll with it. So I'm just gonna take my water mister and just get this paint off there. I might even grab a baby wipe here. Good way to clean up your stamps. If you have a sink in your craft area, even better, just run it under the sink. 
You just don't want that paint staying. I don't mind if there's paint down in the grooves as long as it doesn't mess with the design of the stamp and I can still stamp really well with it afterwards, that's fine. I don't really care. My stamps are my tools. So if they get messy, that means I'm actually using them. <laughs> I had a lot of my students tell me that they don't want to use my brand new stamps because they don't want to be the first one to stain them. <laughs> I like any of the acrylic ones and I'm like, eh, it doesn't matter to me. You just jump in there and get it dirty. That's what it's there for. All right, so that's cleaned up. And I'm just gonna zap this with the heat tool. Now at any time, if you don't like the way your design is going, just dry it and go back to your first step. So putting your paints on, misting them with water and creating your background because these will not re-wet once they're dry. So it's very easy to color or cover things up that way. Just make sure it's dry first. Okay, so that's probably 95% dry. There's still a couple areas that are a little damp, but so it's basically permanent there. I just wanna show you a couple other backgrounds that I did using mowed lawn, mustard seed, picked raspberry, and salty ocean, which are my three favorite colors from <clears throat> the Distress Paints right now. And that's just dabbing on, misting the background, and then swirling around. And this is on watercolor paper, so it does stand up really well and take the colors really well. And then this piece, I did the same thing, and hopefully you can see the texture there. I embossed it afterwards. So I could easily go over now with an ink pad and just color up those raised areas and really make that design pop out. Another thing that I want to show you is glitter paper. So this, I'm not quite sure which brand this is, but it is the glitter paper where the glitter is on there really good. It's not shedding any big chunks of glitter. So, what you're going to do is grab whatever color you want to use. I'll go for some pink. This picked raspberry is really nice. So I'm just going to kind of stomp it on there. And then some mustard seed. And then if I left it to dry like this, it would be opaque. It would completely color cover up the glitter. So I'm just gonna mist it with some water. And we'll let that move around a little bit. And then I'm just gonna take a piece of paper towel and just kind of pat it. Don't wanna take away too much color, because otherwise you'll lose, you could lift all the color off pretty much. All right, then I'm just gonna dry this. All right, I hope this picks it up on the camera, but you can really see the glitter underneath the paint, especially when you tilt it different ways. Um, this would be really cool if you want to do a starry night kind of background with blues and blacks and gray. Um, you just got to make sure you remove enough of the paint so that you still have some glitter coming through there. Another thing you can do, you can color um, metal pieces, you can color plastic pieces, wood pieces, any of those things will work great with distress paints. So I'm going to make this little silver, this little silver number from Tim Holtz. I'm just going to make it, let's see, ah, let's make it yellow. Oh, I gotta wipe off this dauber. Had some pink on there. So you can leave it like that, you can also add another color to it. Let's add, add a little bit of blue, 
which will kind of turn to green. I love how these colors mix. So that's one thing too, just kind of think about what colors you're putting together because they will mix. And if you're heating, if you're drying metal pieces, they are gonna get really hot. So just be careful with that. And I'm not gonna dry this 100%. I'm gonna try and only dry it part way and then remove some of the paint. I almost need some tweezers for this. Oh, it's still pretty wet. Yeah, just gotta be careful not to burn yourself. Okay, now I got off all the paint I wanted to get off and I'm just gonna finish drying. So there you go. Now the paint is permanent on there. I don't know if you can see the silver where it's still coming through. There you go. So the paint is permanent on there and you have a nice little distressed number. If you don't like it, you can always cover it up again. All right, so the last thing I'm gonna show you is doing some seam binding ribbon. So let's see, we'll add some silver. Make sure my dauber is actually clean. Some seedless preserves. You really can't go wrong if you're kind of wondering, hmm, what color should I use? Or what color should I get? If you don't wanna get the whole collection, you really can't go too wrong. Especially if you already like the uh, distress colors. So now I'm just gonna mist this with water. Help it move through the ribbon. And then I'm just gonna dry this again. So it's not super crunchy or anything. It is a little bit thicker feeling than if you just put Distress Stain or ink on it, but it's still flexible enough that you could tie a bow with it. And it's nice because it coordinates with whatever project you're doing. So you can do ribbons, metals, plastics, glitter paper, watercolor paper, acetate, tags, stamping, you name it, there's so many different projects that you can do using these distress paints. I highly recommend them. You know, just grab a few colors that you think will coordinate together and definitely a metallic or two if you can. And then yeah, just jump in and start playing.